let's take a close look at stage one of glycolysis. Glycolysis begins when D-glucose enters a cell. The first reaction of glycolysis involves the transfer of a phosphate from ATP to glucose. You should recall seeing a computer model of the hexokinase enzyme undergoing induced fit after binding a molecule of glucose. Enzymes that catalyze phosphate transfers between ATP and other molecules are often called kinases. The standard free energy change measured for this reaction, is conducted in a closed system under standard conditions, is minus 4 kilocalories per mole. This is an exergonic reaction. Phosphate transfers like this one are called coupled reactions. Immediately after a meal, glucose enters your bloodstream in the small intestine, usually in large amounts, where much of it enters the liver. That's the first stop for in ingested nutrients. The rest of the glucose, once it's past the liver, is distributed to all cells. In plants, photosynthetic cells synthesize glucose from scratch. Inside the cell, glucose is quickly converted to glucose 6 phosphate. Any G6P that is not needed immediately for its free energy would be stored as glycogen in animals or as starch in plants. Stored glycogen is visible in the electron microscope as electron dense granules such as those seen in the micrograph in the lower right. Between meals, or at night in the dark in plants, glycogen or starch is hydrolyzed to release glucose 1-phosphate, which is in turn converted back to glucose 6-phosphate by the enzyme phosphoglucomutase. Mutases are enzymes that catalyze the transfer of functional groups, often phosphates, from one carbon to another in the same molecule. The fate of glucose 6-phosphate retrieved from storage polysaccharides depends on the cell type in which the reactions are occurring. Let's look at the energetics of the hexokinase catalyzed reaction. The easiest way to do this is to think of the reaction as the sum of two reactions. The first is the hydrolysis of ATP shown here. The second is the phosphorylation of glucose, a condensation reaction. We can sum the two reactions by first canceling the terms found in common on both the left and right side of the chemical equations and then adding the remaining reactants and products as seen in the summed equation here. The hydrolysis of ATP, of course, is very exergonic, which is why the phosphoanhydride linkage in ATP is often referred to as a high energy bond. We know that the overall reaction is exergonic, with a standard free energy change of minus 4 kilocalories per mole. After the summing up, we can calculate the free energy changes, and the delta G0 for the phosphorylation of glucose turns out to be plus 3.3 kilocalories per mole. This is an example in which an exergonic reaction is coupled to an endergonic one. Let's take a look at another reaction. What's the standard free energy change for the hydrolysis of glucose 6-phosphate? This is an exergonic reaction, and the standard free energy change is minus 3, it's actually minus 3.3 kilocalories per mole. This is an important chemical reaction, especially in liver cells. Let's look at the enzymatics, I call it, of hexokinase, that is, some of the enzyme's catalytic properties. The catalyzed reaction is biologically irreversible. You'll probably remember from some chemistry course that all chemical reactions, including biochemical ones, are considered reversible. So we call a reaction biologically irreversible when the enzyme does not readily bind and therefore reconvert products to reactants. How does a biologically irreversible hexokinase help an organism? Well, once inside the cell, glucose is rapidly converted to glucose 6-phosphate, and it isn't recognized by glucose transporter proteins that got the glucose into the cell in the first place. So this valuable nutrient, once in the cell, can't get out. Hexokinase is one of the allosterically regulated enzymes of the glycolytic pathway. Glucose 6-phosphate, the product of the catalyzed reaction itself, can bind to an allosteric site on the enzyme and block its catalytic action in fact blocking its own formation. Glucose 6-phosphate binding at this other or allosteric site causes the enzyme to change shape and to be unable to bind glucose or ATP at its active site. How is allosteric inhibition of hexokinase by glucose 6-phosphate useful to a cell or to an organism? Well, when glucose is plentiful, say right after a meal, it gets into cells and the cells build up high concentrations of glucose 6-phosphate which then inhibit its own synthesis. Thus, the cells get the glucose they need, leaving the rest to circulate to be shared with other cells and tissues. Let's consider glucose 6-phosphate phosphatase again. This reaction is also biologically irreversible, and the enzyme is only active in the liver between meals. Why do you think that is? 
It's because between meals, it's necessary to mobilize stored glucose in the liver, that would be glycogen, and glucose 6-phosphate phosphatase is part of this process, catalyzing the removal of the phosphate group so that now glucose can cross the cell membrane by binding to the glucose transporter protein, allowing glucose to exit the cell, in this case exit the liver, and be transported to other tissues that need glucose for energy.